Hello world and welcome to another video in my Short and Sharp series on Photolab 8. This one's going to be all about noise reduction, and I've divided things in two. So I've got the first bit of the video where I'm kind of walking through what some of the different settings within noise reduction do, and then the second part where I'm going to compare what noise reduction using Deep Prime XD back in Photolab 7 and Deep Prime XD 2S now in Photolab 8 how those two things compare and what differences you can expect. So if you're just, if you already know what you're doing, you can jump to that second bit. And before I get going, let me just say, I've got a couple of things. I've got affiliate links in the description below, um, but wait, there's more. I, I reached out to uh, my contact at DxO and managed to get a 15% discount coupon code. So I'll have that in the, in the description down below as well. So if you're interested in saving a bit of bit of uh, moolah, check out, the <laughs> check out the discount code in the link below. Also, part of a series, I'll put the link below to the rest. I've got a wee playlist with the different short and sharp videos. Check them out. All right, enough of that. Let's get into it. So here we are in the photo lab and let's get straight to it. I've got some images here, but I'm only going to look at a couple of them because I want to keep this moving and do it quickly. So I've got this image of two cacas. This was taken on a Nikon D70, quite an old image. It's at 1600, but it's from ages ago when 1600 was a big deal. If I zoom in here, I've got noise reduction turned off. You can see there's a good amount of noise going on through here that needs to be corrected, even though it's just 1600. And it's not the best image in the world, but it does show things up well that I'd like to show. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. And I'll probably keep zoomed in more or less like this through a lot of what we're doing here. So noise reduction up here, we've got light, color, and detail. And detail is the one we're after looking for noise reduction. And it is the first item currently turned off. If I turn it on, there you go. It's made a difference. Now, it's not a massive difference. There is definitely still noise. I find it actually quite pleasing. It's a setting called high quality, and this is the default. This is a not terribly processor intensive noise reduction that is sort of the default within Photolab. It depends on your settings a little bit, but more or less, this, this is what's going to be on most of the time. And in fact, this on your main preview is all you're ever going to see. Even if you use one of the beefier types of noise reduction, it, it can't process that in real time. So it gives you a bit of a noise help by putting on the high quality for your visual um, help, but, but it's not actually doing the full deal. But we can get to the full deal. And look at this. If I click on here, see, no change to what I'm seeing there, because essentially it's still just showing me the high quality, unless, unless I use this new loop tool, which is fantastic. We didn't used to have this. For anybody that's been with Photolab for a while, you know how great this is. We used to have a tiny little window up here where we could sort of see what was happening. Now we can see really well. The loop tool comes in two sizes. Little, if your processor is having trouble keeping up or you just need a small bit. Or this on my desktop computer, it's got no trouble keeping up, so I just leave it on the big one all the time. Currently on 200%, I can change it. Currently on 200% here. That makes sense to me. And you can see as I do that, it's cleaning up the noise in that area, giving me a, a, a show of what it's going to look like upon export. And it includes everything in that. So if I had some extra sharpening done, that would be there. Any other kind of adjustments I do, that would be there. So it's doing sort of the total package for that little window. And you can see that cleans that up so nicely. So let's take a look at what we can see in terms of our settings. Do we need to touch our settings? Not always. In fact, I've got a little bit of a tweak here from having looked at it before, so I'll reset that. That's this, this right here is how it'll be. We've got luminance, it's on auto. We've got dead pixel, it's on auto. And force details, by its nature, starts out on zero. Just quickly, what do those sliders do? Well, lots of times, you know, you're looking at this, it's probably fine like it is. You maybe don't need to touch them. But if you find you do need to touch them, here's what they're about. So I'll do this like this so we can see this area nicely. If I turn down the luminance, it's going to allow more luminance noise to exist. So you can see here how that's just allowed more luminance noise back into the image. So for me, 
I kind of like this. I kind of like to turn the luminance down a bit because I like to reintroduce a little bit of that noise. I don't like them too clean, but you know, that's entirely up to you. That's what it does. Now, if I go the other way, turn it all the way up, well, you can guess it. It's going to try to wipe out every last little ounce of luminance noise, but it might do that at the cost of detail. It might not look as realistic and as detailed. So you have to find your sweet spot and it attempts to hit the sweet spot with that little auto right there. Dead pixel, not going to talk about too much, but your sensor can have dead pixels. Photolab can correct for them. This number is on auto. It changes if you have sort of a longer exposure. You're more likely to have dead pixels show up, so it would be a bit more aggressive with its dead pixel fixing. I never touch it, like literally never. And the last one that I will look at down here, I'll just shift this up here because it's uh, I like to see um, these feathers here. And in fact, maybe we'll just bring this in a little bit so that we can really see. So I put the main image on 400. I put this on 400. And I'll just rearrange so that I can see this bit right here is what I'm interested in. Now, obviously, this is crazy zoomed in. It's just because we're on YouTube, it'll be a little bit hard to see. So I want you to be able to see a difference when I do this. So force details, if I bring this down, it's going to make everything a little soft and smooshy, a little bit more painted, maybe. Just let that render. No doubt you saw that happen. So it just takes, as the name sounds, takes some of the detail away. So if you're finding your image as it is, is looking just a little not right or a little too chunky or whatever the case might be, you can try tweaking that a little. I doubt very much you're going to go to minus 100. You probably, you know, might hit minus 20 something like that. You're going to play with it. You're going to see what looks right for you. This is going to be something that's done to taste. Now, I'll just reset this to the zero point again. And now, looking right here, you can already see there's like a little bit of, a little bit of, funniness in the texture of the feathers there, um, just at zero. And if I do force details, you'll see that amplify. Just let that redraw. And there we go. And this is actually, it's so far up and it's not a surprise. It's introducing some artifacting. So obviously, again, you're probably not going to want to go all the way up to 100 on this either. It's probably something where you're going to want to, if you want to try to force a few more details, you're going to tweak you tweak it up slowly and gently until it gets to a place where it looks right to you but you can see we're at 400 percent to see this it's not making a night and day massive crazy change especially on the detail side on the on the less detail side it's a bit more noticeable but on the more detail side it's not making a, a super like night and day difference all right so that is that. We've got luminance slider, we've got dead pixels, which I never touch, and we've got force details, which you can move around. You're seeing all those things only when you've got your loop on. Other than that, if you don't have your loop on, what you're actually seeing is essentially the high quality because that's all it can do for preview. Right, so now let's jump over to another image. All right, so just quickly, this is an image of a midwinter carnival a lantern current festival that, was, that goes on here in the town where I live. And I, I just wanted to show you this because it really, really highlights the difference between what you could do in Photolab 7 and now what that looks like in Photolab 8 and actually just how big a difference there is in, in what it's doing. So let's first of all jump in. I'm going to be looking around this green building because there's some great detail in there when I, when I zoom in. So if I bring that into maybe about 200, First of all, this is the image with no noise reduction. Again, this is only ISO 1600. It's not like I'm not going for crazy, unbelievable, um, you know, ISO 20,000 kind of stuff. But it is also an older camera, so that, that impacts too. So currently nothing turned on. If I come over here, turn this on, it's going to do a little bit of work. But remember, this preview is not the proper preview. This is just the high quality preview. So grab my loop. Put my loop on 200 so that it matches and let that draw. And you can see what an incredible job it has done. Let me just use my compare tool. You can just see what a massive difference, how much that's cleaning that up. Quite incredible. So here, without going anywhere else, I can quickly show you what the difference is going from Deep Prime XD2S back to 
couple of generations ago, Deep Prime. This was my previous favorite. So if I click on that, what do I see? Well, it's actually not bad, but there's quite a bit more artifacting going on. I know it's going to be hard to see on YouTube. Let's just bring this and bring this. Um, so you can see at 400%, it'll show up a bit more. Doing a good job, but if I come over here, let that draw, that cleans that up substantially. Substantially. So let me show you, I've, I've exported from Photolab 7 and from Photolab 8 two different JPEGs that show Deep Prime XD and then Deep Prime XD 2S, the new one. So bear with me, I'll be right back. So here we are back again, and just quickly let's have a peek at this. I've got my two JPEGs, the Photolab 7 version on the left, the Photolab 8 version on the right. What I'm going to do is set it up so that the I'm using the new compare feature, so I'm going to right click on this one and say use as my reference image. So now it set these up as side by side, but of course I don't want those side by side, I'll just bring that like that. And I'll just do a quick compare. So as I use my compare button now, it will reveal the other image. So this one is Photolab 7's Deep Prime XD, and this is Photolab 8 with XD2S. Photolab 7, Photolab 8. A substantial difference. I don't know about you, but I have to say I am surprised by how much of a difference. I expected it to be better, didn't expect it to make that much of a difference. So with a little luck, that should get you started with noise reduction in Photolab 8. Do remember that this is part of a series, so please check out the rest. Just, there's a link in the description to the playlist with the other short and sharp videos in. Also, affiliate links down below, so if you'd like to try or buy, check those out, and I really do appreciate it if you do. With that, I'll say thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.